What if you scribbled an idea on a napkin and it became a limitless scale tech company poised for exit? What if you had a vision of eliminating an inefficiency in your community, industry, or the world, and you had a chance to co-found a company and bring this product or service to the market? What if we could positively impact every social issue with tech? 10X Tech Tank is the number one daily show for everything tech entrepreneurship. And whether you are technical or not, you will learn, be inspired, and witness transformation in the making. People will share tech ideas on napkins. People will showcase minimum viable tech products. People will explain their cash flowing tech companies looking for acceleration. And if the person is right and their idea is right and the market is right and the business model is right, then there's a great chance you will witness some serious magic. We are on a mission to build, scale and sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. And we invite you to make history with us. Together, we achieve more. Welcome to 10X Tech Tech. New setup today. Jared Yon here. So excited to have you. I have my friend here, Tom. Tom, I want you to introduce yourself. You, you're extremely accomplished. Um, my first time meeting you in person as well. I feel like we, we know each other though because we have really some like meaningful conversations, some really cool stuff with the university that you went to as well. But speak into who you are, what you're doing in the world, and we'll have our first guest come. Yeah, no, for sure. And Jared, thanks for having me in. I came down from New York. I've been here all week uh, seeing clients and uh, others. And uh, it's been a great time. I hate to go back, but uh, tonight, tonight I head back to New York. Yeah, but uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a financial advisor. Um, I help clients you know, manage their portfolios, and I've pretty much focused my practice around business owners. Um, typically, I get involved when they've already scaled up and are ready to sell. That makes the perfect opportunity to work with them. We do estate planning as well as investing. But what I've found over the years is that I miss a huge part of the entrepreneurial market by waiting until people are ready to sell. It's so, much, it's so, it's so exciting to be part of helping businesses start, grow, and then scale. And uh, that led me to launch an angel investment club kind of as a side hobby with uh, my business school alumni group. And so we do, we do similar shark tanks. We do it once a quarter. And uh, it's just amazing to see how fast it grows. There's so many amazing ideas out there. Most of them, unfortunately, never get the capital to actually take a shot at success. So to the extent we can connect them with investors. We also, I think education's a huge piece of this too. People start an idea, but they can benefit from expanding their networks with other people who can help. So alumni groups are a great source of bringing industry experts to the table and we help companies grow. And we've already got a few success stories That's where people awesome. have scaled up and uh, hopefully in the next couple of years there might be a sale. That's awesome. And as you know, with, with, with the tank, we have really early stage entrepreneurs, right? So Back of the napkin, right? See, yeah, you're going to see napkins. You're going to see sometimes minimum viable products. So some of the people have invested some money. Mm -hmm. they might give us a demo during the show. Okay. And other times we do have some cash flowing companies and they're looking for acceleration. But, the, but everyone that comes on this show has this big moonshot in mind. Okay. It's like something that they want to cause in the world. There's some impact they want to have had. And this is their dream. Like, this is their dream. And we tell everybody, if you're watching us tonight, we tell everybody you're one pitch away from having everything you want in your life and more. You just never know when that pitch is going to be. And maybe tonight's the night for some of these entrepreneurs. I hope it is. Yeah. We always want to say yes. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Our goal is we want to say yes to everybody, but we can only say yes when there's four things that happen. The right person shows up with the right idea in the right market and the right business model. And when those four things are present, we're going to say yes to due diligence. But we do need your help. As you're watching us, this is your first time here, we need you to be vocal in the comments below. If you love one of the pitches, you're like, oh my goodness, I would be paying for that if it existed, please share in the comments below. Influence our decision. And if you stand against it for some reason, politely, because it is their dream, tell us so we know and tell us why. Tell us like, what we're missing because we might think it makes sense to go into due diligence, but we don't realize something because maybe there's an industry person out there that's like, no, there's 47 other options of that. There's nothing unique about that. So please influence us in the comments below. All right, listen. All right, we got somebody ready for the tank. Please let them in. Who is our first entrepreneur pitching us tonight? What if you knew about Instagram or Slack or Clubhouse when the company was raising a friends and family round at $10,000 per person? What if you were able to see all the tech companies that Grant Cardone and Jared Yellen have co-founded in one place and invest in any that excite you? What if you were able to expand your portfolio into early stage tech companies with extraordinary founders and teams? 10X Tech Angels is the most unique investment club that you will ever find because not only will you see some of the most innovative tech 
tech companies at the lowest valuations ever, but you will also be educated on how to pick tech winners, meet other members of our community, and experience the excitement associated with taking an early idea to exit. Become one of the founding members of 10X Tech Angels for an exclusive offer with some extraordinary bonuses. To learn more, visit 10xtechangels.com. All right, we are back in the tank with another entrepreneur. What is your name and where are you calling from? Uh, I'm Contessa Shaima. I'm originally from Palestinian uh, and Jordanian, so I'm living in Kuwait. Awesome, all the way from Kuwait. Well, we're excited to hear your big tech idea. I see your presentation is up, so you're ready to go. Take it away, you have five minutes. Please share your big tech idea. Okay, so I am just want to make sure that you see my, my screen, uh, the PowerPoint that I have. Do you, you see, see it? My, okay. Bob. I, ah, I may have said that incorrectly, but we do see your screen. Sorry? We, we see your screen. Yeah, you, you can start. Ah, okay, okay, so, okay. Uh, my name is Belcontessa Shema. Uh, today, I would like to present for you my uh, application, my idea, which is under name Matbakhi application. Matbakhi is an Arabic word, which means your kitchen. So, uh, actually, my... Just a moment, sorry. Okay. Actually, my moonshot is... Uh, to uh, gather different cultures that is related to kitchen under one platform. This will facilitate the online shopping as a customer will find everything related to the kitchen and cooking under one application. So actually my application will be the means to link between the customers and the big, small local businesses that is work with the kitchen tools and et cetera. So actually my uh, the problem or inefficiency that is I'm trying to solve is that in the Arab world, we have lots of occasions and the common denominator of this occasion is the food. People love to decorate their dining table using different uh, themes and utensils, and utensils and they love to cook and they are in need for the kitchenware. So as a follower for two influencers, I found lots of, uh, in the social media, I found lots of people that they asking them regarding their kitchenware and utensils. So, and I found lots of local businesses that they don't ship worldwide. So, because we have a lot of occasion and there is a need for the kitchenware and utensils, and this is consumer time from the customers while they are search for things they need using a different website and application from different countries, if applicable. And as well, there is a lot of local businesses that they have a place, but they don't have a website. So they, they face a difficulty in shipping worldwide. I decided to come with a solution, which is an application that sum everything related to the kitchen and cooking under one platform. The application links between items and tools used by the chefs and suppliers of these things and the customer. The idea of the application depends on having a boutique for famous chefs, uh, starting with the chefs in Kuwait and then going to the Middle, uh, to the Middle East chefs. Chef's boutique will include items he or she use like kitchenware, electrical kitchen machine, utensils, special food items, cans, uh, cooking books, and going forward uh, to having a cooking classes, maybe by um, available by Zoom or whatever application. Uh, actually, I'm the right person to use that to make this idea happen because um, I have a passion on the kitchen where I love to um, have a look about different cultures, what they use. And actually, I'm living these occasions, especially in the Arab world, so I know what we use and what we need. Um, and according to the economic model, to be honest, I didn't get what do you mean exactly by this question, but according to my studies and my um, uh, my back regarding this one. So what I understand from this question is that in the Arab world, particularly in the GCC, there is a high purchasing power for the kitchenware, utensils and cooking stuff. Uh, especially we have a lot of occasions, uh, as I said, like Ramadan, Eid, uh, family gathering, and this occasion is for the whole year. So that, uh, so they love to cook and they love to display the food in an attractive way. So there is a market for them. So regarding the price sensitivity, I feel like it is very low. And according to my go to the market strategy, mainly the idea of the application depends on selling the cooking and kitchenware that chef use in the Middle East. So the chef will do an ad for the items they, uh, that are in their boutique and we will reach customers via their social media channels. 
uh, as well as we will make a field study to also understand our marketing strategy, which will be implemented using the hollow strategy in order to understand what the customers need more in order to put it in their boutique. And why I choose you? Because I feel like that you have the technical knowledge and um, with a regards to develop the online platforms and I have the operation financial knowledge so we can complete each other. And thank you for listening to my idea. I hope that I don't uh, exceed, the, exceed the time. Awesome, you did great. Can you, you can stop sharing your screen. So I have a question for you, what? So one of the things we always talk about, um, if you can stop sharing your screen so we can see you. Okay, so. Yeah, perfect. So thank you. So one of the things that we always look for is when somebody shares an idea with us um, that's eliminating an inefficiency or solving a problem is we want to make sure that the solution is at least 10 times better than what, what currently exists mm -hmm. and that it creates like that moat that you were referring to. So from what I understood, I feel like much of this is possible on an Amazon wish list right now. Like if, if, a, if a chef wanted to put together a wish list on Amazon of all the equipment that they use in their kitchen. Um, and they wanted to become an affiliate of Amazon. They can make a like one or two or 5% of any of the sales. Um, and then they could start having people purchase their, the equipment that they're using through their Amazon wish list. Explain to me how what you have proposed is exponentially different than that. Because Amazon okay. already has consumers and the products. You wouldn't have my okay. days. Yeah, explain okay. that. Okay, um, actually, and uh, the different things that in Amazon, maybe because in the Arab world, it is a little bit far away from us. So in the Arab world, we know Amazon for sure. We, we are, all of us are trying to order from Amazon. However, it takes the, uh, regarding the shipping, it is consumed time, this is number one. Number two, uh, in this application, uh, we are trying to uh, gather all the shifts in the Arab world. And the different is that you can order it from different boutiques at the same time. And this is going to be under one, uh, 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 one, one shipping. Okay, so it is easy for you in order to ship for them. So this is going to, uh, uh, this will not uh, consume money even for the, for the customers who is uh, trying to search. So this, is, so this solution is gonna launch where? Like where would you launch this initially? What country? Uh, I didn't get it. Sorry, I can't hear. What? What, what country would you launch your platform in? Like this is so ah. cool in the marketplace, right? So okay. this is a marketplace platform. We talk all the time about marketplaces have one of the more interesting economic models in tech because they're they're typically free for 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 the characters to join. So it's free to join. So there's a chance to have like millions and millions of users, but they're 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 so cash flowing to take a percentage of the transaction. That on the on, on the platform so there's really great economic models there's challenges with going to market though because you have to get two different characters on the platform where do you launch this like what country are you starting with because in the like US, the concern is this is not that different than using amazon but i hear you saying that it might be where you plan on launching it so where are you launching it uh, in the Kuwait, at the beginning, it will start with Kuwait in the shifts inside Kuwait then we will go to the gcc then to the middle east got it and how how big of a market is there of people that want to purchase kitchen utilities? It is, it is, a, it is big because, you know, uh, as I mentioned, we have lots of occasion, especially in Ramadan. In Ramadan, every day we have, it is 30 days in Ramadan for, uh, for in the, as a Muslim country, we have a three days. So in three days, we have to, well, lots of food that we have to, sub, uh, making food, we present the food in a good way. And especially here in the tradition, um, every week we have the family gathering for every week that everyone who has to make a dish, we are trying to make them in a good way. We have Eid, to Eid, mainly to Eid. And uh, we have lots of occasions that depend on these things. So that's why there is a market and there is always need for the kitchenware. And especially in Kuwait, there is no website, no application that gather these things. I, it is, I'm, um, I decided to make it with the chefs because the chefs is a door to, uh, to go for every house. Because, you know, as a social media, uh, lots of people, they are love to, uh, to follow. Uh, the influencers, they love to know uh, something in you. So that's why they will be um, a door for the customers to see what they use because then, you know, uh, following the influencers, we love to have what they have. Okay, so I had a couple of questions for you. Um, in terms of the revenue model, I wasn't clear how that works. Is it, is it a margin on the products people purchase? Is there some type of an advisory consultative piece? And then my second question was, 
I wasn't clear on the technology itself. Is it, is it more than just advice and putting things up? Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, okay, um, I can answer both of them at the same time. So uh, regarding uh, the idea depends on having a boutique, which means that see, for example, there is a shift number A. Shift number A, we will, uh, we will as an application, we will deal with the supplier, the supplier for the kitchenware, utensils and whatever. So we will make a deal for them. We will purchase everything from them and on a patch. So we will have a store definitely for them that we will put inside our boutique, our boutique for the chefs. So we will make it on the other side, we will make a deal with the chef. The chef that, okay, while you are doing whatever in your social media lives, so you have to use our products that is inside your boutique. So, and you will mention that, that inside my boutique, we have one, two, three, you can go and purchase them from my boutique. So the customers on the other side, they will enter the boutique, of this chef, he will find whatever he needs and then buy it. The chefs will have definitely a percentage from uh, if they buy things inside their boutique. And because we our revenue will be from selling this uh, stuff as we already buy them within a batch. So definitely we have a margin. Okay. I'm curious what, so let's pretend we do this, okay? We know nothing about the Kuwait market at all. Uh, so we have to lean on you to bring the product to market. The technology is not difficult with regards to what needs to get built. What's difficult is how we actually get it to market. Um, how, if we don't exist, let's pretend you had the product. And this is like a 30 second question that we're gonna open up to the audience. How do you scale this? Like how do you scale to getting these, these influencer chefs and how do you scale to getting families that wanna buy the, the utilities the chefs are using? Like 30 seconds, how do you do that? Okay, you mean, uh, but to be honest, I didn't get the question. You mean how I would reach the chefs and how I reach the customer? In Kuwait, this is what you mean? Yeah, and, and 30, a quick response, like 30 seconds. How would you uh, mean? Okay, it's because uh, there is a lot of marketing media here in Kuwait. I already, there is, I can make um, a survey regarding what the customer is easy. They know it, and this is easy for us here in Kuwait, you know, what the customer needs to know. We can deal with, with the chefs uh, through a marketing media. Uh, if you need to come, you have to join because you will have a percentage if you buy and making a, a survey regarding things that they need. And we know the suppliers uh, we can make also a survey regarding the suppliers inside Kuwait and outside Kuwait that we can uh, bring the stuff inside here. Okay. All right. Let's see what our audience thinks. So you did a wonderful presentation. Appreciate it. Love your passion. That's, that's something we can feel. What are your thoughts? Should we move forward in due diligence? So here's some of the things that were concerning to me um, about this that uh, brought challenge to me. Although I want to say yes, because I, I love your passion. Unfortunately, it's, it's I, I'm going to have to say no today. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Um, I, I believe that the go-to-market on this is actually very challenging. Uh, this is a double-sided marketplace. And as a result, we have to convince two completely distinct parties to come to one platform to now start making buying decisions. And I don't know what I don't know. So maybe in Kuwait, there's like this burning desire for a platform like this. I just don't know. In addition to that, I think you mentioned that we have to first go out and, and potentially buy the products in advance, like the actual utilities in the kitchen. So it feels very capital intensive to me to actually execute on this. And for those reasons, it just seems like there's a lot of risk. If you think that we're absolutely crazy and we missed it, you are welcome to, to send any additional information to our team. But for this moment, I'm gonna say we're a no in due diligence. You did a great job and we appreciate you for coming to the tank. All right, after commercial break, we'll have another entrepreneur in the tank. The insurance adjuster industry has not received much love in the space of innovation, ever. Professionals in this industry are faced with extremely arduous processes that make scaling difficult and quality of life poor. Claim Guru assists public adjusting businesses by providing powerful tools for managing every step of the claim process, from origination to settlement and beyond. In addition, Claim Guru will help professionals stay on top of their adjusting caseload, proactively guiding them through the process, which makes the customer experience significantly enhanced. Our client-centric approach helps to increase your company's capacity, providing you with the tools you need to grow and succeed. From lead management, contract execution, scheduling, claims filing, claims management, loss scoping, loss documentation, document creation and distribution, file transferring, claim activity documentation, task reminders and organization, form filling and filing, payment intake and distribution. The process is currently way too complex and time consuming to allow for maximum profits. Until now, 
We invite you to take your public adjusting business to the next level by hiring a guru, the one and only Claim Guru. All right, we are back. We got another entrepreneur talk. All right, let's do it. What is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Marcus Wolfertson, and I am something so strange as a Swedish guy in Texas. <laughs> That's awesome. Swedish guy in Texas. All right, you got five minutes. Please share your big tech idea. Okay. I'll share my screen and then go with the pitch. Um, so this is a, uh, a pandemic idea. So this is, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, I tried to go down to my favorite cafe uh, and do some, <clears throat> do some work, work from home, right? Because everyone works from home away now. And in Sweden, at least, they had all, you know, every other table was blocked off and, it was fewer tables and more distancing and all these guidelines. And I couldn't find a spot. So I just walked from cafe to cafe and tried to find like where can I sit and work. So my idea is very simple, but yet complicated. Um, it is a some type of application that lets you reserve your favorite seat. So I started this idea in a cafe, but I also see that it's used, could be useful in restaurants and transportation. Uh, I went to a minor league hockey game yesterday, um, and I do see that it could be used in that setting as well. The general idea is not a usual book to book your table kind of thing. It is using IoT to figure out which seats are available um, and use dynamic pricing so that the owner of the establishment can actually make a buck because you can reserve your favorite seat. So for you, you win because you get to seat in your uh, favorite cafe at the favorite in the time that you want to be there. And the owner of that establishment also gets a dollar or two or 10, depending on the traffic at that time. So if it's a high volume traffic time, the owner will get more for his seats. You will have to pay more to get your seat. And obviously if there's less. So it's also an an upside, I think, of spreading out traffic for, for an owner of establishment. But in addition to this, I'm thinking in this pandemic times, well, if you are using this app to book your seat and book your table, why not also use it to order your stuff? Given that table service is coming back or pickup service, you order to apps, that's very standard these days. So why not also do that in the app? And then link everything together with uh, the kind of the cash register system so that you can also use this app to pay. And then obviously you have the next step, which is adding credit and, and using, uh, using that as, and gamify the whole process, obviously. So you can kind of go through it. So that is my general idea. Um, I do not have the technical knowledge, which is why, Jared, when you were at the, the 10X workshop in, in Miami in, in January, I don't remember if it was sales or marketing, but when I heard your story, I'm like, well, I'm not, this is not what I do uh, because, you know, um, I, I do something else. I do soccer. I do sports. Uh, but I do see that having this type of application, which has dynamic pricing, and obviously, you know, you can make money because you, you charge a percentage of every transaction. Um, in addition, if you go into the whole credit and payment thing, obviously, that's a huge upside, I think. Um, and I do think that this is something that the world kind of needs. Um, I think with all the, the, the st more stringent guidelines from, from health authorities, there will be less spots, there will be bigger distances and establishments and figuring out where, if that is you working from home, but being away uh, in your favorite cafe, or if it's like my experience yesterday, I went to a minor league hockey game and for some reason, I got the ticket. It was an $18 ticket, but I got it for free. And I'm like, why? And then I go inside and I see, well, there's only a thousand people there, tops of the 5,000 that the arena holds. So I guess in a way that was dynamic pricing, but in this situation, using this type of application, then the, the club owner can still the make it. Yeah. We get the, so how do we get the cafe? You can stop sharing your screen. How do we get the cafe to um, integrate this into their cafe? Because it, it almost feels like this might need to be like something else that they're managing now. Because it's not just like a reservation. Like people are paying for it. And 
they need to make sure somebody leaves the table in order for the next person to come. So how do we make this not a Herculean feat for the cafe? Because if they don't install it, there's no business. Yeah. So here's where I'm thinking using um, IoT. So basically having, if it's a, for example, I'm sitting on a very hard and uncomfortable wooden chair right now. I could use a cushion which has a pressure sensor and the IoT system and that can connect everything. So everything automatically, you see if there's a seat available. So it's not a managing something you have to manage. Right. But even that's like, that's a, there's a point of friction because like there's, there's some cost with that. So yeah. is, is the cafe paying for it? Are they then gonna have to go and change their seats and put these new cookies on that has the IoT device built in? And then the question comes down to, is the juice worth the sweets? Like, is it really worth the effort of, paying $100 per cushion, changing the seats, they get dirty, they have to clean them, like convince me, as a, like, I want you to like sell them. I, I own the cafe. I have 12 tables. I would love to make a few bucks on those tables. I'd love to have those tables filled because if they're filled, I'm going to make more money when they're buying the, the lattes and the, and the, the, the different um, food and stuff. But convince me as the owner of a cafe that this is worth pursuing. Well, I think, um, you know, we, the, the pressure cushion, of the, the cushion, et cetera, will be done in material that's very easy to clean. You have to wipe it off as you wipe off the seats. That will be not, not be anything additional. Uh, for you, it will be about providing an extra service, making life easier for you, but having also all the orders in the same system. So you don't have to go between things, right? So um, it will be a competitive advantage for you because you will have customer, repeat customers coming back. You will be available, uh, um, it will be possible for you to provide additional offers through the app to these repeat customers. You can get them back. So you can say, hey, you were here, uh, you know, two days ago. Why don't you come back and you get a free coffee, right? So you can kind of lure the customers in and tie the customer into the establishment. Um, the technical solutions, I don't think, I think it's, there will be need for some development work. Uh, I don't think these things are here yet. Um, but the, all the technology is here. It's just you know putting it together and 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 making the system work. So I had a couple of things for you. Great job, by the way. Um, I think you'd have to do some a little bit of market research before you could really try to move this forward in two key areas. One would be really prove out that customers desire their own personal table. Um, I know for me, I eat out a ton. And for me personally, I don't really care what table I get. I just want a table. But the, the bigger concern I have is around the dynamic pricing model. There was a big soda company years ago that tried dynamic pricing in their vending machines outside. And their price would vary based on the temperature. <laughs> and it was massive uh, blowback from customers saying, uh, you know, you're, you're price gouging me um, and I don't like it. So you really have to make sure that that concept wouldn't hurt the loyalty factor of the restaurant owner. And again, you could probably fl flesh that out with some surveying of people. Yeah. But I think that's something you want to button up before you try to move to the next step. Yeah, great feedback. Let's see what our audience thinks. What are your thoughts? of the, the Swede from Texas, Marcus, who uh, shared his big tech idea. Now, if you own a cafe, would you use this? Would you integrate it? If you're a patron, you're a customer going to a cafe, would this make your life easier or would it potentially bother you? Please share in the comments below. And should we move forward with due diligence? Here where I stand, I love your passion. Um, I, I find you funny too, the likability factor, which is really yeah. important for entrepreneurs. Um, but I absolutely agree with Tom. You got to survey on this. Like there's, there's, there's just too much gut here. It's like, I think it'll work, like, but let's just prove it out, right? This is easy to prove out. You don't need to have the IoT device to prove this thing out. If this matters enough to you, go and survey in, in the, in wherever you are in Texas, 10 different cafes and, and, and ask questions that don't lead them to saying what you want them to say. There's an exercise that Stripe, which is a merchant processing company, came out with called problem stacking. And we actually expanded on this like immensely for our use case. But the whole premise of problem stacking is every business, every person has dozens and dozens of problems in their life. And that's not me taking like a half glass empty mentality. That's just a reality. There's just inefficiencies that exist. And what's so important when you're launching any new business is that you're solving one of the top five inefficiencies for a large enough demographic. Because if you're solving problem 74 across the board, no one's going to pay money for it. Yeah. And I'm curious, a cafe, with all of the inefficiencies that they face, where does this fall? Is this in the top five? Because if yes, it's a home run. Is it number 12? Is it number 92? Most likely it's not worth pursuing. Go doing some survey, share the data that you find, and uh, thank you for coming to the tank. All right, after commercial break, for our final entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Oops.
Sprinted is the place where you can go in and put those steps in there and then be able to impact the world and monetize on that by having a marketplace in the community that we're developing for you in Blueprinted. So we've created the app for any expert to be able to come in and put their steps, their exact steps to success in our app and put it on a marketplace where people can go and buy their steps to any success. All right, we are back with our final entrepreneur of the evening. All right, see who it is. All right, what is your name and where are you calling from? Well, my name is Dr. Stephanie Aldrich, and I'm from Akron, Ohio. So Dr. Stephanie is already a co-founder with us with another company. And uh, I told her with the company that we're, we're already going to launch, um, the only big name, maybe there's more than one, but the one big name in, in Akron, Ohio is LeBron James. And I said that she's going to become bigger than LeBron James with her first <laughs> tech company. Now, Stephanie has two tech companies. She's going to become two times as big as LeBron James. All right, Stephanie? So please take it away. You got five minutes to please share your big tech idea. Well, thank you. Uh, Tech Tank for this opportunity. And what I want to do is introduce you guys to Zaydu Market. We're going to resell 10 million digital products over the course of the next five years. We're going to tap into the $200 billion a year e learning digital industry. The problem that's out there is there's no secondhand marketplace available to buy and sell pre-owned e-learning products, just like used cars, secondhand books, and even think of Facebook marketplace. There's a tremendous need for used items. Why not digital products? Zadu Market will be the premier exchange platform. Costs and awareness of products make e-learning prohibitive to millions of consumers out there. And once you purchase and use your product, your audiobooks, your e-courses, uh, and even your e-books, what do you do with them? All they do is either clog up your hard drive or your cloud space. Zadu Market brings buyers and sellers of e-learning products together in one platform. So who am I? I have to admit, I'm kind of an addict. I'm a learning junkie. I love to learn new things. And over the course of the last decade, I've spent close to $100,000 just on e-learning products, from dental and marketing courses to audiobooks and e-books. I've pretty much bought them all just to become a better person, a better business leader, uh, and it would be great to get a little bit of my money back and kind of let other people learn the same techniques to improve their businesses and become a better person. The concept is simple, and I know that 10X Incubator can help make it happen. Let's open up the market and allow the knowledge to flow. So what's the economic model in this whole thing? Basically, Zadu Market will charge a 3% commission on both ends of the transaction, the buying and the selling. So that would equal a 6% commission. Also, e-learning uh, companies can buy advertising banners on the site. Sellers can promote their products uh, with sponsored ads, and that can help them you know, sell a little bit faster on the site. Uh, think of the Amazon sponsored ads. And also buyers can post ads of products that they have. You know, I have, you know, an ebook to sell. Uh, think of Craigslist. So it will help to, you know, create the flow of the marketplace for buyers and sellers of these products. So the go-to market strategy, basically a landing page with a no commission buy sell for the first thousand transactions. What that'll do is just open it up to the marketplace and you know, get people familiar with buying and selling their digital products. And word of mouth always um, can go for free and doesn't cost anything. And then you can go with the traditional Facebook ads, YouTube ads. Um, and of course, I want Grant, I wanna be on stage at the 2023 Growth Con 
pitching this successful company. So why is the 10X Incubator the perfect partner for me? Well, I'm kind of the idea person. I've always been that way. And I know that the tech, uh, the 10X Incubator has the team. They have the engineers and the marketing that can bring these ideas to the marketplace. Uh, you know, with Grant backing this company with his social media presence and his knowledge of sales and just the people that he has met over the past decade, I know that we can make this thing go. The MVP will be very, very simple. Think of a Craigslist kind of thing. It'll be quick to create and definitely a win-win easy sale. It's a no-brainer, Jared, and you're already working on one of my other ideas. This thing is a billion times better and bigger than Cancel it is. So I would love to keep working with you guys. Zaidu in Chinese means once again or one more time. Why not spread the techniques and strategies that are locked up in these digital courses to the world? There's hundreds of millions of people around the world that can benefit from this marketplace. So let's keep it going and give it to the people that desperately need it. Well done. Awesome, awesome work. You can stop sharing your screen. Great job. So Thank it's you. I have a friend who's a, a track record serial tech founder. And he, uh, you can stop sharing your screen, Stephanie. And okay. uh, he's, he's really big in the info product e-learning space. And uh, the other day, he's like, I got a free idea for you. I'm like, what's, what's your free idea? And he's like, we need to build the ability of a marketplace for people to resell their e-learning products and, and, and put it on the blockchain to us uh, so we can, we can have smart contracts that also pay the creator because the, the resistance would be the, the, the creator, right? The Grant Cardone, the Gary Vaynerchuk, the Tony Robbins, who like sells the info product. And now instead of having more people buy the product from them, the people that have already bought it are reselling it and they're being cut out. But if we build it on the blockchain, the creator will also get paid, the platform will get paid. And now there's this whole ecosystem of buying and selling e-learning products. And uh, he doesn't want to execute on the idea. He just, he had the idea and you just presented it. Um, there, there is, there's definitely a market for this. Um, I was also thinking of some other things as well that could um, make this, this like phase two of it um, really interesting. Like imagine if there was the ability to, to earn a higher percentage of the sale if you actually completed the product, they completed the program. Because any of these, these course creators, they ultimately want to create impact. They don't want you just to buy their product and let it be like the treadmill sitting in the house that doesn't get any use, but they want you to go through it. So if you complete it, it's on the blockchain, you can know that it was completed, then you can get a higher percentage of the sale when the actual sale takes place. And it really motivates these creators to be open to this platform. Question for you, how do we get to market? Like, forget about Grant for a second. Let's pretend that you were doing this completely on your own. How does Stephanie bring this to market? What type of relationships are you hitting on? How are you getting people to even know this is the place to go to buy quote unquote like used e-learning products? Like what would be your strategy, no growth con to bring this to market? Go for it. Well, I think that uh, just social media, getting people to, you know, understand what it is. Um, any of the educators too that are out there, uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, college kids, that kind of thing. I think the college market would be a huge thing as a step up, especially in this society right now where there are jobs, but maybe not necessarily what they want. If they could get an edge, hey, I took a bunch of these sales courses that I got on the marketplace, and now I'm doing this, this, and that, and I'm more attractive to those companies. I think that's an easy way to get it, you know, get it out there into the into the communities. Cool. Yeah, no, it's interesting, Stephanie. I, I'm not convinced yet that I wouldn't be just as satisfied as a buyer to go on eBay. And so one thought I had, and which is my question, I'm thinking about just as an example, e-learning for children. So let's say I can certainly go on eBay and search if I know what I'm looking for. Is there any piece of this business, Stephanie, where you can help like a parent who says, I'm looking for a device for my son or daughter that can do this. And maybe it's a questionnaire. I don't know what it looks like, but then you have an engine that can somehow recommend products that happen to be available. Is there anything like that in, in the business model? 
Um, I think if you just put a simple search bar, it could then bring in all of the products that have that, especially if people um, are posting the products that they have, then it's almost like a newspaper, a, a, cla a classified want ad. I have this and then call this or, you know, we would have some type of interface where they can, you know, maybe interact with each other um, and maybe even, uh, you know, ha hassle with each other and, and bargain so that, you know, oh, I'm going to sell this for, you know, oh, I have a, um, you know, I want my child to start learning how to read. They're, they're having an issue with that. Well, you know, these products are, are great online. I have that product, you know, I'll sell it to you for this or whatever, and then go from there. Interesting. Let's see your audience thinks. This is an audience that, that is very big in the e-learning space. They buy info products. They, they go to events and would you use this? Like, would you take products that you've already completed and put them in a marketplace so you can make a few bucks on that product? Absolutely. I would love to get, and some of these products I started using and I saw that that is not what I want to do. I would love to recoup some of that money yeah. that I spent on this course that I'm like, I'm not even doing this. Let's see what the audience thinks, Stephanie. So what are your thoughts? Should we move forward in due diligence? So here's my thought. So I'm a yes. Literally the other day, this gentleman pitched me. And I think you guys should sync up on this since you're already a, a tech founder with us and maybe do this one together because he has a depth of experience in the in the e-learning space, like has sold hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in e-learning. And, and I think you guys can be a dynamic duo. Um, obviously, you can sell, which was what initially drew me to you when you shared your original vision for Canceled, which is also a home run for the record. Um, this, this is just another home run. So you get two home runs for sure. But you're going to have to retire from dentistry. I think that's what it looks like. Now, Stephanie, I'm going to ask to go into deal diligence. Great job today. We appreciate your energy and your commitment always. And thank you for coming to the tech. All right. Blueprint it is the place where you can go in and put those steps in there and then be able to impact the world and monetize on that by having a marketplace in the community that we're developing for you in Blueprinted. So we've created the app for any expert to be able to come in and put their steps, their exact steps to success in our app and put it on a marketplace where people can go and buy the steps to any success. There we have it. What are your thoughts, my friend, on the tank? We had we had five people pitch us. We had four no's. We had one yes. So that, that's what happens in the tank. Sometimes there's all no's. Sometimes there's all yeses. We just don't know, right? I told you from the start. I'm like, I don't even know what you're in here today. Here today. Yeah. You're like, really? I'm like, no, I have no idea. And we had, but we had some good pitches. We had a lot of heart, a lot of dream. The ones we said no to, it's mainly because we just didn't really, we couldn't de-risk it, right? A lot of it had to do with just the risk. There was too many unknowns. But how does it feel to sit in the tank? I think it was really interesting. Um, we saw five good businesses. I love, I love the educational aspect of what these two shares can hopefully represent, where you're giving just constructive feedback to people that have something, there's something there, but they need a little bit of direction, which is one of the great things we can do here. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Thank yes, you for having me. Thank you for being here. And listen, what you just said is why we're doing this, right? We want entrepreneurs to pitch. We want to create a platform that's safe for you to have your dream heard. Because for many of these entrepreneurs, where would their dream be heard if right. they didn't share in the tank today? But we also do it for you, our audience. Because as you're watching the tank, you're going to see somebody that looks and sounds like you. And because of that, you gain the courage to go into that little black book that you have of all these great ideas that are going to never get executed on. And you're like, I'm going to take that one and I'm going to bring it to the tank. Mm -hmm. And that's my call to action to you right now. As you watch the show tonight, go pick your best idea, whether it's on a napkin or a little black book or something that you started years ago and you've just plateaued with it because you don't know where to go next. And head over right now to pitch, P-I-T-C-H, the number 10, 10x.com. Pitch 10x.com and submit your idea. It's completely free. It's a written application, takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Our idea review committee will go through your submission and then we'll decide whether or not there's something there. And if there's something there, we're gonna invite you to pitch in the tank. A safe place to have your dream heard. Because what we stand to do here is build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies over the next 10 years. Yeah, I'm a little crazy, but I'm way more on something than I am crazy. And I wanna be on something with you. So head over right now, pitch10x.com, submit the application, and we're excited to get you into the tank. All right. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.
Which napkin will become the next exit? Which MVP will evolve into a unicorn? Which cash flowing tech company will reach the next level? Our hope and desire is that it's yours. Your idea, your MVP, your cash flowing tech company. Now is your time. Head over to 10xincubator.com and submit your idea so that you get on the tank and give us the chance to transform your napkin into an exit. That's 10xincubator.com. That's 10xincubator.com. Let's go.